So we are going to design a negative feedback amplifier step by step. Just one example, but I really want you to understand the steps because usually um, it, it is common practice to just present the feedback structures without telling you how to design them. And this course is about designing something when you don't know all these structures. So just knowing that you need to fix some parameter A or B or a combination of parameters uh, of this transmission one matrix of an amplifier, and then you have a procedure of what to do. And it always starts with the fact that we have a source, a load, and we want to establish a transfer from source to load. And in this case, um, I had a voltage source connected uh, with, a, with an internal impedance, and I have a load impedance, and I want to establish an, a voltage amplifier. So the voltage gain should be accurately fixed with respect to, uh, um, sorry, ac accurately fixed and independent of the load and the source impedance. So the first thing that you do if you do negative feedback is, uh, of course, you can just put immediately the complete picture in it, but given many of you know the amplifier, but let's discuss about the step-by-step -step approach. If I want to achieve a load voltage VL, then I'm going to measure what I want to have. So I measure the load voltage, and in this case, it is the load signal. It is In this case, it is voltage. Well, voltage should be measured across in parallel with the load. And if I want to have current at my, uh, through my load accurately fixed, then I should measure it through in series with the load. I hope this is clear because this is quite elementary that you uh, use your voltage meter across something you want to measure and a current meter uh, in series with something that you want to measure the current through. So let's do it. Measure the voltage. So I need to measure the voltage in parallel with the load. That is the first thing to do. And I want to have their VL. Then we are going to design a network that generates a copy of the source signal, V or I, from this measured load signal. So it means the transfer of this network is the reciprocal transfer of the desired source to load transfer, because we are now going from load to a copy of the source. So it's the other way around from going from source to load. So the transfer of this network is the reciprocal of the desired source to load transfer. Let's do it. So we put some block there. And later on, I will show you examples of what this block can be. But let's give this block a voltage gain of one over the desired voltage gain of our feedback amplifier. And that provides me a copy of Vs. So if the load voltage would be correct, then it means that the copy there is exactly the same as the source. The next thing is I subtract that copy from the source signal. So how do we do that? In case of voltage, it needs to be connected anti-series. So the minus of the two things together or the pluses of the two together, but because you do V1, minus V2, you have to place them in series, and this minus sign makes it what we call anti-series. If it would be current, then you will have to connect them anti-parallel. So, because current is subtracted in a node, and in nodes, and, and as a voltage is subtracted in loops. So let's do that. We just connect it like this, and here we would have an error that preferably is zero, of course, because if the error is zero, then VL is an accurate copy, is, is uh, exactly AV times VS. That's what we have established then. So we are going to nullify this difference. In case of a voltage, so you see here the green one, the blue one, in case of a voltage, the nullator closes the loop of the above series connecting. And, uh, in case of a current, the nullator is placed in parallel with the above anti-parallel connection. So what is a nullator? A nullator is a network element that you cannot buy. 
um, it's a, a conceptual thing and it puts a condition in your network equation. So it doesn't create a short or whatever, no. It puts in your matrix a condition that there is no current flowing in the nodes of this, the two nodes of this nullator and that the voltage across it should always be zero. Of course, if you have your square admittance matrix and you just add a condition, then it cannot be solved because you have an unequal number of rows and columns because you added a row, which is a condition. So we have to provide another degree of freedom. So a narrator is placed in parallel with the load in case of a voltage load si a signal or it is cl closing the loop, exactly the opposite as here, closing the loop in case of a current output. So here we have a voltage output and across the load, I place my narrator. And this combination together is called a nullor. What does the, null, the narrator do? Well, let's, let's just play some, some, some as if we are converging the network, if we are solving the network. Let's say we put a voltage of one volt here. We have an attenuator of a factor uh, 10 and we just connect it to the network. And let's say, and nothing happens initially. So it means the output voltage is zero. If the output voltage is zero, then the voltage here is zero. And across here, we have not matched the condition. So the network is not yet solved because we would have 10 volt there. Then the narrator provides current. That's what the thing does to satisfy this condition. So the narrator provides current so that the voltage across VL will increase, increase, increase until it reaches VL. Then this will be the copy of VS and then the condition will be satisfied. The output will be zero. That is how it works. So the nullator is setting a condition. It is not making a short because V equals zero or something like that. No, it is only setting a network condition. And the extra degree of freedom that we need, the extra column we need, because we added the row in the matrix, the extra column we need is provided by the narrator. And that, um, of course, there should be a way in which the narrator can influence this condition. If there is no loop, if there's no loop from narrator to nullator, this thing can do what it wants, but I will never satisfy the condition because it doesn't affect it. So what we say is nullator and narrator always appear in pairs and are then called a nullor. And a nullor is in control theory, the ideal controller. The ideal controller, it means that there is no error at the end here for any frequency because the condition is frequency independent. So here we have the whole uh, procedure for whatever, uh, whatever uh, thing you are going to make. If you go through this, you can design any amplifier. 